Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of Marking the Times. Uh, this is Dr. Mark Hitchcock, and I'm here in my office at uh, Faith Bible Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, my wife and I, I just got back from Israel uh, about six days ago. Uh, we got back uh, last Friday, and uh, we were we were in Israel there for uh, we were there for 13 days. The, the rest of the tour got there a little bit later, but it was quite a time to be over there in Israel uh, with all that's going on in the world. We were kind of insulated, really, from a lot of things that were happening while we were there. Um, but we kind of, you know, towards the end of the time, we started getting a lot of text messages from people about different things that were going on and, you know, about President Trump closing travel to uh, from, from uh, Europe back to the United States. So people were kind of scrambling around to, to change their flights and all. But it's it was really surreal because we were gone for 13 days, uh, my wife and I, and we left. And it's like we came back to a different world. I mean, everything had changed. It, I can't explain it, of, of kind of being gone and kind of being immersed and traveling around the land of Israel and coming back and the changes that have taken place. Um, you, all, you all have experienced that as well. We all have. It just seems surreal to us. Uh, we're, we're living in unprecedented times. Uh, we're, we're kind of embarking, if you will, out on uncharted waters um, as individuals, as families, as a nation, as we kind of make our way through this and work our way through what's happening. Um, what I want to do really in this time is just kind of share some, some truths with you that I hope will be comforting to you. Um, I think at times like this, you know, what a lot of us do is we turn to the Psalms. And there are a lot of Psalms that give us comfort in, in difficult uh, times. But I want to just give a, a brief little lesson here in Psalm 11. I won't be able to say everything about it. You can go and read it on your own later. Uh, but let me just read the first few verses and I'll make a couple comments about this. Um, this is a Psalm of David. And David says this in Psalm 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string to shoot in darkness at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? That's kind of an interesting question today. If the foundations are kind of destroyed, what do the righteous do? The word foundations there in Hebrew has the idea of pillars kind of the, the foundational principles and pillars. And he says, if those are destroyed, literally the word is overthrown, what can the righteous do? You know, people have this idea out there that the ground's kind of shaken under their feet. They wonder what's happening. In fact, uh, when Cheryl and I were in the airport in Tel Aviv, headed to uh, back to Newark, New Jersey, coming back from Israel, um, there was all kind of things going on. Our flight was delayed. There were a couple of young men standing in front of us. And um, I struck up a conversation with them. They were obviously uh, men from Israel. And uh, one of them looked at me and he says, man, he said, what on earth is going on? He says, is this the end of the world? And I looked at him and I said, no, I don't think this is the end of the world. Um, but I said, but Jesus is coming someday and you better make sure you've trusted in him when he comes. And he kind of looked at me with kind of a bewildered look on his face and he just turned back and started talking to his friend again. But we do have this sense people do what in the world's going on and that really the world could be getting near the end. And so what do we do as believers as we live in these times and these kind of troubled times? Well, Psalm 11 has an answer for us. And here's a simple thought to take with you. In, in troubled times and difficult times, when it looks like the, the pillars or the foundations are being destroyed, you and I need a fresh view of God and we need a long view of history. We need to get a fresh view of who God is. But we need a long view of history. We need perspective. You'll notice in this psalm, after he says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Um, back up in verse 1, he says, but how can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain? In other words, people were telling David, hey, David, flee. I mean, get out of here. I mean, panic. But rather than panic, David says in verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. So David said the first thing we need to do in times when it looks like the foundation are being destroyed is see where God sits. God sits in heaven on his throne. Um, look, the most important thing that you and I can know during these times is that God is on his throne. Um, heaven has an occupied throne. And that's the one thing that David takes comfort in here uh, above everything else. Um, I like what Max Lucado says. He says, rather than rehearse the chaos of the world, rejoice in God's sovereignty. A lot of us are rehearsing in our minds a lot of the chaos. But rather than rehearsing that, we need to rejoice in God's sovereignty. So the first thing David does when the pillars are destroyed is he, he looks at what God sees or where God sits. God sits in his throne, his throne in heaven. But next he, he looks at what God sees. He said his eyelids, his eyelids test the sons of men. This picture is like God squinting, like his eyelids. Like God sees everything 
uh, that's happening in this world. So God sits on his throne. He sees everything that's happening. And then you go uh, to verse 6, and he says, Upon the wicked he'll rain snares. Fire and brimstone and burning wind will be the portion of their cup. In other words, he speaks now of the future tense and said, look, God someday is going to ultimately deal with all the evil in this world and make things right. So he's saying, look, take a long perspective. Take a long-term perspective when you look at this world. Don't just look at today and the problems now or how's it going to be at the end of the summer. Take a long-term view of what God's going to do. And then he says in verse 7, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. The upright will behold his face. So when the pillars are being destroyed around us, it looks like you know that the ground under our feet is shaking. We need to, to, to get a fresh view of God. We need to see where God sits. We need to, to remember what God sees. He sees it all. And we need, need to see here what God shares. God, uh, our ultimate reward is the face of God. To see God, he says, the upright will behold his face. This psalm begins with the Lord in verse 1, and it ends with the Lord in verse 7. And that's where we want to begin and end in our lives, trusting um, in Him. And then verse 6 takes us all the way to the end and shows us what God's going to do. So when the pillars are being destroyed, when there's chaos and confusion in our world as we see today, you and I need a fresh view of God. We need to see uh, where God sits, what He sees, what He shares with us. We also need a long-term perspective, a long view of history. So we don't get so bogged down and worried about everything that's happening today. God has it all under control. God's going to ultimately work it out for his purposes in the end. So I hope that'll help you in these times in which we're living. Go read Psalm 11 and commit that to the Lord and ask him to make the truths of this psalm real uh, to, to your heart and to your life. Um, I hope that these, uh, these messages maybe during these troubled times will be a great encouragement to you and your family. And if they are, maybe tell somebody else about them. They can watch them and find strength and encouragement in God's word um, as well. Well, God bless you until we see you next time.